Yeah, so here we go again. Hi there, I'm Ben. Uh, this is Solo Therapy, my substitute for psychotherapy. Due to my therapist being busy growing another human or taking care of a freshly grown new human. Um, funny how that worked, you know. Uh, it's been a moment since my last update. Um, I haven't been busy, actually. Um... There was no way for me to be busy, for I had caught up with all my bureaucracy and was just waiting for the system. Um, that has changed as of Tuesday and even more so as of Wednesday. Um, now it's Friday, um, 2024, 1108, um, the 8th of November. Time is 1.25 in the a.m. Uh, plan is to have tea today, um, not this Senchaharu we had last time, but, um, I'm opening up fresh 50 grams of Gyokuro Nakatani, um, sorry for butchering that to all Japanese people, but, yeah, um, some of the luxury I've still got in my life, so might as well, you know. I have actually gotten around to watching a past session of mine, a past one of these here. Um, I watched session 109, a uh, title Adding to Pain, and kind of made me feel kind of horrible because I was full of hope at that point in time. Um, down low but on the upward, and I feel that is no longer true. I feel I'm just on the down low, not on the upward no more. Um, which to some degree is obviously depression speaking. Uh -huh. um, then again, it is part of me and I cannot discount that. Um, sucks to be depressed, surprise. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, this week, Wednesday, so day before yesterday though, I'm going to mess up all the relative day things because my circadian rhythm's starting to get screwed with this unemployment and so on. Um, day before yesterday I went to a convention which I'd gotten tickets to a couple of months back free of charge. Parked a K away so didn't have to pay for parking. Um, which means it was only the expense of the diesel of getting there and it's the other side of town so it's not the cheapest. And with hindsight it's kind of irresponsible of me to have driven all that way but I've done it nonetheless and it's in the past now um, convention was for electronics uh, I did get a couple of goodies um, two CEE 16 volt uh, 16 amp connectors for 400 volt free phase both are a bit gimmicky and I'm not too fond of either of the two but hell I mean they're free so I'm not going to be complaining um, oddly enough, with a convention, I mean, there's a lot of people, particularly as it was the opening day and so on. And I didn't actually mind the people because they were all doing their own business. There was space and I could get away from people. So, oddly enough, I guess the problem with public transit isn't the sheer amount of people, but their prox proximity and lack of activities for me. Um... Then again, these days I'd have to pay for public transit anyways, which I cannot afford, so that's a problem I no longer have, of having paid for a semester ticket and not using it. Uh, um, on the other hand, I did get a letter from Volkswagen for a recall. Uh, I got this about a month back. I have, in the in-between, made an appointment and realised the appointment at a Volkswagen dealer because just for bloody software update, you know, and don't want to have a man catch up with you. So, hey, hey, here I went to the dealer to get the software update, and apparently the check engine light I have caused them to not be able to update it. Um, it's not critical, the check engine light. I am fully aware of what it is. It's a bloody wire. Um, I have since done investigative work as to where the bloody wire run and of course it's on the very bottom of the wiring loom which means I'll want to take off the front end of the car to do it. 
but at this time I do not have any replacement wire so there's no point in doing that really um, don't want to be t taking it apart twice once for finding out where and once for replacing it if I'm taking it apart I might as well replace it right away problem with that is though um, obviously wire costs money um, I believe I got 90 bucks in my bank account and about a five or tenner maybe 15 if I'm lucky in my wallet another five are worth in my jacket pocket and change and that's about it um, oddly enough my reserves are starting to run low my food reserves but I'll still do for a while particularly as last time I went shopping I actually bought three kilos of flour just because it's cheap it was on offer for 49 cents euro cents per half kilo or per kilo I think it's per kilo so I actually probably got five kilos six kilos um, and there's energy you know uh, I got some yeast I got butter got some eggs you know that's all you really need um, it'll get me around for the while in other news which I guess is good news um, the bureaucracy I got on Tuesday, uh, I haven't done any of, but it shouldn't be too bad to do. It's because I have an appointment next Tuesday, um, so in four days' time. Shit, time fly. Um, for my first career coaching appointment. Uh, for now, it's on a voluntary basis from them, because they are not being paid. Due to the job centre not having processed me, which is where... Wednesday I've got more bureaucracy to do mm. because they want it in writing that I owe money uh, to my sister and my mum um, I do no longer own, own, owe any money to the workshop for the car um, paid my debt on Tuesday so that's weight off my shoulders I guess um, that after having Helped a friend shoot something for their company on Monday. That was quite fun. Um, yeah. So I had a fun day Monday shooting. But now I'm going to have to produce documentation for... Well, not by myself, but still. Now we're going to have to write up loans I have. Which so far are just honour-based. And family, I guess. But, you know. Um, that's something I'll have to figure out. And then they want some other shit, like, oh, uh, what's the buyback for insurance policies? I didn't even know that was a thing. I mean, yeah, okay, if I dereg the car now, I'll get back most of the money I paid for the insurance for it. But I'll also not be able to leave the house much, so, you know. And I'll have a brick of a car, which is worthless. Well, probably worth a few grand, which would keep me running for half a year or so, but still, you know. Half a year, if you've got to pay for rental car to go shopping don't don't last half a year it lasts a couple of months uh, um these ce connectors uh they're by different companies they have different gimmicks no, just unwind the strain relief by accident there we go this one is a toolless assembly uh, you still have to strip the wires to put them in um and it's not very reassemblable, so you can take it apart all the way to the prongs coming out the front. These prongs. And the other one is a um, rather interesting concept of um, no wire stripping assembly with actual solid brass prongs. The other one just have copper sleeves, which are hollow. I mean, I got them now. It's not like I've got anything to do with them, but you know, swag. Didn't cost me nothing, and it gave me a reason to get out the house. So that was a fun one. And I would actually not mind doing something like that again. Uh, I have looked at the schedule for the upcoming conventions just because if you know ahead of time long enough, you can get free tickets. Um, beside the fact that spending the diesel to get there is irresponsible and I cannot really afford to but still you know um, and 
I actually wouldn't mind doing that more often. But there isn't any conventions coming up in the next half year that I could care for, really. So, that's just the way it is. Mm. I reckon good news, but I'm not sure. So I believe by the end of next week I should be entitled to a loan from Job Centre. For things like paying my rent and so on. Even if they haven't processed me all the way. Particularly considering I've been as cooperative as possible. Um, that's just how it is, you know. Because I believe by then it'll have been long enough since I've applied for me to actually be entitled to that. Which is lovely because it is really rather painful not having paid rent. I mean, I am here in a place on a on the eighth day of the month. So more than a week into the month and I haven't paid for it. It's just painful. Um... Then again, it's fucking privilege. I still got a roof over my head. Who knows how long that will last? T R. I am gonna have to clear up my place sometime, but I've just been way too low energy. Um, what was it? Day before yesterday, so Wednesday after I returned from the convention, um, I had a nap all the way till the evening, which is why my circadian rhythm is kind of screwed. And then in the evening, I did actually manage to cook some food, though I didn't have the energy to eat any of it. Yesterday, I then fried some of it up and ate it, so that's something, you know, getting some food in there. Solid, you know, could, couldn't be better, really. Um... But I highly suspect that is not a sustainable eating schedule, eating every other day or so and cooking every other, um, particularly considering I've got bureaucracy to do with deadlines. I mean, by Tuesday I've got to have my certifications and history all in one pile for the career coaching, which is very much so my own interest. And then by the end of next week, basically, I'm going to have to get together the stuff Job Centre wants which some of which I don't even know you can get but I'll have to do my best and worst case write them up boy this is not gettable it does not exist which is just you know I mean I've complied with everything they want and yet a few weeks later they'll write again and say oh by the way we need something more we forgot something the last five times at least what it feel like. Realistically, there's only the third batch of documents they've requested, but still, it just feel horrible. Um, I mean, I'm not in control in the first place. Then again, I am the one who's asking for charity. Then again, this is a social capitalistic society, not just a straightforward capitalistic society, so one can expect such a thing, as one is expected to pay into such things when one is employed. It's kind of meh, you know, but it's the way it is, it's just the way it is, run DMC, ha ha, uh, I have gotten some new wipers for the car a few weeks ago, I have yet to install them because together with that I'm going to have to completely wipe the windscreen inside and out just because it's been filthy for a while now and I really ought to change it. Good news is this time I got them on clearance which means they were less than half the price of the last set I paid and they are non optional realistically and the closer we get to the winter to winter the less optional they become. Um just because once they're sot on the roads you can't do without a wind windscreen wiper, windshield wiper because you won't see none. If you don't see nothing, you can't safely operate heavy machinery. Uh, just, you know. I mean, I have managed the explorative work with the car. At least finding out where the wire run that need replacing. I know which one it is. I've known since the 4th of December last year. Then again, it was not in the slightest a priority. Um, back as to... 
I believe I'm less on the up than I was half a year ago uh, with session 109 adding to pain where I redefined the term pain um, at that point I was running low on a couple of things like body soap and so on for showering but now I've actually reached a point where I'm running low on most of the things the only thing I'm not running low on is laundry detergent because I bought way much in the first place I bought 30 kilos to start off with I still have more than 15 and it don't spoil it for something um, shower gel I'm running low and I haven't bought the fancy stuff though half a year ago I'd hoped I would I just haven't been in a stable enough economic position to be able to afford 100 bucks worth of soap that will last me a few years but now I'm also running low on toothbrushes, toothpaste, deodorant and bog roll um, it's just the way it is you know then again good news is I guess I'll have a lot of time in the near future assuming I manage to get the bureaucracy done and don't just vegetate the way out of fear of having to do the bureaucracy which is the likely outcome to be fair um, out of the threat of having to do bureaucracy uh, I'll have some time to clear up my place here because some corners are quite filthy I mean I have majestical hair again these days uh, it was shorn by paramedics with my bicycle accident but it have grown back since but that also mean I have hairballs and corners and I really need to vacuum the place if I'm vacuum vacuuming the place I'll before then need to clear all the surfaces so I can actually vacuum which I reckon will be a solid days of work um, assuming I don't have any other obligations in the day such as cook, eat, get bureaucracy together, realise appointments um, yeah so I don't know how likely that is to happen but one can only hope there is still a light at the end of the tunnel but is becoming fainter and fainter which is, I guess, kind of really sad because that means I'm headed the wrong way. Um, I mean, best I can hope for is self-sustainability by the time of mid of Q2 next year. Uh, which is kind of, you know, suboptimal. That's just the way it is. With my current reading, I have made a bit of progress, not too much though. I'm not in the right mind space for reading a lot of the time. It is good for me and it don't take much energy and take some concentration, which is actually fun. It's almost like a puzzle in my mind. It stimulates the mind just enough. And you get the feeling of having done something, but I just haven't the energy most days, sadly. Uh, life's a piece of shit when you look at it, but I always look on the bright side of life. If life seems jolly rotten, there's something you've forgotten, and that's to laugh and smile and sing and cheer, I think. I'm not sure of the lyrics in that place, but still, you know. Uh, um, with my current creative projects, um, working title for and perspectives, I'm actually caught up at this time, and I am waiting for the collaborator. I think I'm gonna have to send him a message later today um, during regular human waking hours, considering it's almost two in the a.m. now. Um, reminding them that they really ought to get their arse going because once they've done this first step of their stuff I still have to do most of the video work and then they still have to do most of their audio work and we have two and a half weeks remaining then again it might be something I can use in executive dysfunction uh, with having to do this bureaucracy at least I can start the video stuff and then I'll feel I'll have done something and guilt myself into doing bureaucracy but who knows nobody knows it's the king of the road 
you know, the more I think about it, the more I feel I'm just losing it. Um, I've been having trippy dreams, which I don't think is good. Never know, you know. Yeah. I still have aspirations of doing a manifesto video essay-ish thing. Um, I also still have aspirations of doing a video series of Tales from the Shrine. Where I tell tales of my shrine here. Um, sorry for that, just got to wipe something on my face. There we go. Uh, yeah, where I can tell tales of my artifacts of my shrine. Um, I guess good news is they don't hold much monetary value, which means it's next to impossible to get me to sell them because the va the effort to sell them in the first place would not justify the monetary gain. Before considering one would not have access to the items one had before. So everything has its upsides. Uh, another thing which have changed recently, well not so recently, but recent, recently enough for it to be recent in my terms, actually quite a few things, I'll, I'll just got to blow my nose, I'll be right back, there we go, that was that, um, is weapon law in this country, you're now no longer allowed to carry knives whatsoever, at places of assembly or public trans transit or near public transit. Carry also in your bag, which I find ludicrous. I mean, okay, I'm somewhat of a country kid, but for the country kids, I'm somewhat of a townie. I'm just not a big city boy. But, you know, it seemed bloody weird. Because, I mean, actually, this is something I can get from the shrine. Ha <laughs> ha. Just got to make sure to not spill my tea that's brewing, you know. Which is why I'm being careful to sit down. I mean, this here is a very petite knife. I mean, hand for scale, you know. Um, it's not even locking. You can't open it with... Well, you, you can't really open it with one hand. If you can open it with one hand, it's still not locking. And you're not even allowed to carry this in your pouch. I mean, hell, just... In, in a backpack, in a trouser pocket, you aren't allowed to carry that. It just seems like a really bad joke to me. Um, I guess it's something with more stabbings in the recent past. Then again, I don't know if that's actually factual, if it's just media representation in certain bubbles. Then again, don't know if factual really matters, because as long as politicians are making up their minds, they are making up their minds, you know. And I would say if you can't beat and join them, but I really wouldn't want to. Um, I mean, I've done the student representation because no one else wanted to do it. Good news is with national and or regional politics, there is always someone who'll want to do it more than me. Um, maybe not for all the right reasons, but... I wouldn't do it for the reasons they would, which means I wouldn't be doing it as easily as they would. The only reason I'd step up to do anything politics is because no one else would want to do it. Which is why I've done uni representation for two and a half years. Shit, man. That was a waste of lifetime. Uni representation remind me of something else. Uh, later the month, end of the month really. I got my graduation ceremony coming up. Um, have had the schedule sent recently, and it's kind of odd because their main focus these days is on international students, which means, yeah, okay, it's international English, but at least somewhat English. They're inviting for head toss. Um, I have this sort of strong suspicion due to the background imagery. On the schedule they mean a hat toss as in the American uni thing with oh you've graduated uni 
you no longer need this piece of cheap cloth and throw the square hat away, you know, but for all I looked up, if you look up head toss, the main result on the Googles, on the interwebs, is coin tosses, because you can get heads or tails, and if you throw heads, it's, it's a head toss, you know, um, but I don't think they'll, they'll want to flip coins, but I also have a really hard time fathoming, fathoming the idea of, um, professionals sending an email to hundreds if not thousands of people that have such poor language I, I don't want to give up hope that hard you know in my fellow humans by the way I am fully aware that when I say my fellow humans that makes me sound less human um, it's part of the joke really which reminds me of another grand scheme of things view is I think I'm really rather depressed I'm without perspective I'm chronically burned out and haven't the energy to do much but I can still laugh at things like that you know my fellow humans today's snack of choice by the way is the same amaretti biscuits I've had for the past few ones and I do not have any other sweets in the house which was actually detrimental on end of October because apparently that's Halloween I completely forgot again might want to set myself a reminder then again at this time I'm not in the economic situation to be able to buy sweets for kids so at this time I'm not setting a reminder which means even if by next October I am in the economic situation I'll probably end up forgetting again mm. I told some I didn't have enough and then later on when some came I, I had some pizza because I've been doing pizza all evening just because you know got to eat something um, the neighbor's kid from upstairs uh, gladly took pizza and I, I said oh, I'll take one for your sibling as well because I, I know their siblings you know um, and then later three small kids came I said, oh, no, I ain't got nothing, but I got pizza if you want pizza. Um, they said, yeah, sure. Got some tin foil, got three pieces of pizza for them, but was still bloody warm. I said, oh, what's that got on it? Oh, it's got salami, it's got some cheese. Oh, no, thanks, don't want that. And I was thinking, what did you think was on pizza? You think I was going to put Nutella on it? Which, to be fair, for pizza buns and rolls, is not actually bad, but I can't imagine a flat pizza with Nutella or so on it. And I also don't understand why you'd agree to pizza if you don't want salami or cheese. Mm. Um, yeah, okay, it could have, strictly speaking, been a pizza margarita or so, with no salami and only mozzarella cheese, buffalo mozzarella. Then again, this is former East Berlin. I don't think people only consider that. Pizza, I think pizza's anything flat and round. I don't get it. Then again, I'm probably just uh, out of touch, as they say, the kids. The as the kids say thing is kind of also funny, uh, amusing, because oddly enough, I mean. I'm 25 years of age, and sometimes I say, as the kids say, about people older than me. <laughs> it's almost as if I'm not the actual age my body is, but you know, just trauma age. Oh, it's funny how life works, you know. And again, can't change what you can't change, and the past is something you cannot change. You can try to change your future, but I'm wondering if it's worth trying even anymore. I mean, I've still got some hope in me, but not that much, you know. Oh, by the way, in case you're wondering what I'm fidgeting on, I'm just screwing off strain relief of CEE connectors, because I have them around now. Uh, yeah, but... 
it's going to be a hard one. And I mean, assuming this um, citizen's money with Job Centre work out, I might make it until I'm economically viable. But, I mean, I got about a week pretty much spot on until I get my first payment reminder for the flat, you know. It's not like I can even give up the flat and live in the car because I've got too much shit. And even then, once you live in the car, you've got other problems like, ooh, what's your address for your bank account? Ooh, I don't got an address, you know, shit like that. Huh. And again, I don't think I'll be giving up the flat. Um, I'll probably ask for another loan first. Which means even more bureaucracy because that means I'll have to prove to Job Centre that I got a loan and it's not just a good faith loan with a verbal contract, they need a written contract for loans. And the joke is, I highly suspect I should provide them written contracts for all the loans I have taken, um, even though they've only asked for one. The reason they've only asked for one is because I've only got money into my account on the statements they've seen for one of those. Um, but I believe it's in my best interest to provide them all, just fuck, you know. Otherwise, next time they'll say, oh, you forgot this loan. Well, no, you never asked for it. Um, I should just preempt them, make my life easier, less stressy. Because once I've given them all I can, you know, here's my birth certificate all the way to my death certificate. There you go. Have a nice day. Um, as an A to Z, um. Nothing about unreliable, by the way, just to be absolutely clear. Um, then they can't really want much more. Then again, it's Germany. They'll probably come up with something I'd have to apply for somewhere else or burn diesel to get into the city centre to get something else from insurance, even though they've already got one thing, they now want another thing, you know. It's just a bad joke. And I kind of feel like I'm a crybaby about it, but... I only have so much energy in the day, man, and I wish I'd be able to cry, you know. Probably do my mental health quite good. But can't have it all, can you? Uh, in other news, um, as of late, even though I'm wearing this t-shirt, it's just because I'm, I'm, I'm on my phone, hello. Um, I'm in my flat up beside that. I haven't got dressed in the past couple of days. Well, since Wednesday. Um, for going out of the house, I've been wearing pretty much exclusively one shirt. Which I have been putting in the laundry by itself. Just overnight or in early in the morning or late, or late in the afternoon. Just uh, wash and dry all the way to iron dry. Which means I can then hang it on a coat hanger and it's smooth. I really like the look of this shirt actually. Let me just get up and get it because fuck why not, you know. There we go. The joke is it's not even that expensive for what it is. It's half the price of the Carhartt equivalent. There we go. It's a nice proper work shirt. Um... They only cost, well, only is relative. I mean, these t-shirts cost a tenner. But these shirts here cost 30 bucks, which is not too bad. Then again, it's not like I can afford another shirt for 30 bucks or two, you know. So I wouldn't have to do my laundry every time I decide I want a fresh shirt. Which I guess is kind of um, being broke tax. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to end up paying more for the water and the electric. Because I can't afford to buy more shirts. Uh, it's like when buying a new phone or so, poor people's tax. It's having to pay for Apple Care Plus with theft and loss because you would not be able to replace the phone otherwise. And it's just a poor people tax. I mean, I've never lost or broken a phone to my understanding actually I have broken one phone my very first phone I shattered after a few years before I fixed it myself but still I've never broken or lost a new phone there we go because that was a hand-me-down 
Um, yet, for all two I have bought, I did purchase the Apple Care Plus with theft and loss. Which might be a stray collection. Might not have existed for the first of the two I bought, but still, you know. It's just the poor tax, because, well, you can't afford to buy another. No. You've got to spend the extra few hundred bucks in the first place, because you can't afford to buy another. Then again, um, happiness is not constrained by solely financial situation, economic profitability um, shouldn't be, at least in my eyes. I guess that's part, partly related to, the, to my current reading, but still. Um, I'm perfectly happy not making fuck ton of bread. A figurative bread, by the way. <laughs> it's not like I'm aspiring to be a baker, but I'm talking about a figurative amount of bread here. But um, bread being the figurative bit, not the amount. But I want enough to at least be comfortable, you know, to not have to worry about oh my pants are wearing out. Let me sew up my pants. Uh, when I'm talking about pants, I do not mean trousers. I mean what you wear below your trousers. You know, if if they're so worn out they got holes in them having to stitch and feel kind of real shit particularly because the elastic's not really stitchable the elastic just give um and again good news is i still got about five pairs acceptable and i got to do laundry rather frequently anyways because i only got one good shirt <laughs> life seems jolly rotten Something you've forgotten. Uh, in the recent past, I have started wearing some of my less casual shoes, I guess. Uh, my pair of docks I've had for shit going on six years. Bloody hell, I'm getting old, man. It's more than six years I've had them. Shit. I've had for eight years. That's the best part of a decade. Of a decade. Shit, man. Yeah, but these docks I've had for the best part of a decade. And I like to keep polished for occasions, you know. Um, I've been wearing those again just because we're getting out of the season for sneakers. And I really don't want to put on my proper boots because that means I'm going to have to kind of take care of the leather. Uh, so... I guess I am still at least good in the footwear department for the moment. My trouser department's also not too bad. Um, my winter trousers are starting to wear in the crotch area. But because they are do have double cloth due to being winter trousers, it's not too bad. Because, surprise, um, double cloth means if the outside cloth tear, you still can't see through the inside. Magical, you know. Almost as if someone thought of that when designing them. Ha ha. Uh, yeah, that's a fun one. I'm actually even good for trousers until next May, presumably. So I've still got good spring trousers, maybe even summer trousers if I'm lucky. Um, yeah, actually I've got a good pair of summer trousers as well, so I'm good till next autumn. Which is not too bad trousers wise. Then again I highly suspect my current pair of winter trousers. Which is the only pair of winter trousers I have. Will be properly screwed by the end of this winter. And. I guess that's not too bad. Because that means clothing. At least for the external. Assuming I launder my shirt twice a week. And wear it for the rest of the week. Without having freshly laundered it. Um. Clothing wise, I'm not actually in too bad a position. But things could be worse, you know. The magical the magical substance of copium. Learning to cope with what the world gives you is fucking amazing. Uh on Wednesday after that convention I had actually considered going by the T-joint 
But then I look at my wallet and I thought, I can't in good faith spend my last money on tea. Um, Though tea is probably one of the most honourable ways of spending my last money. You never know, you know, if I need some milk for baking or so, because I've run out a couple of days ago again, um, for milk. If I need some for using the flour, I've got to actually make food. Uh, That's priority, which means I can't be spending money on tea at the tea joint. Particularly not until I have another way of getting money. Shit, you know. Ooh, backward. Magical. And I've considered doing work um, black. So, off the books, but I don't think I can actually... twist reality enough to, for that to be acceptable for me to be doing. I don't think that's viable, so, nah. Too rule conforming. And again, that's actually another thing. Rules, um, I stopped crossing traffic lights, pedestrian lights, went that way, red, about a year ago, even if there was no traffic. And I think I've gotten to the point where I can articulate why. Um, in the end of the day, with rules, um, I guess you can use the brain meme thing with base brain, da da da, supernova brain. Um, the base level is uh, you follow it because you're told. Um, then you decide. You understand some of why the rules are, and you do as you please according to whether they are applicable or not. And the next level, which is perhaps not the highest level, but the level I believe I am at, is the idea of you understand you will never be able to understand the reasons for all the rules, but most rules are written in blood. So you just follow the rules because... Someone has come up with the rule, and they have had a reason for coming up with said rule. Then again, I might be overcomplicating it, which is why I think there might be a level above this, which is whoever make the rules, whichever one, you know, whichever committee was made by whichever rule, a uh, rule was made by whichever committee, there we go, that's the way. Um, they might have not considered that people will just follow their rules and blind trust for the sake of, for the lack of a better term, is I guess what I'll call it. Because yes, I will never be able to comprehend all the reasons rules exist, but they might have accounted for that, and for people being on level two of this scheme, and thinking you understand why the rules are, and I'll break them as I please. And if the rules are made for that level, then I'm the one screwing myself. Um, which brings me round to an autistic thing, which is um, autistic people are frequently accused of being too literal. And myself and, I believe, other autistic people frequently disagree. The reason we disagree, though, now speaking for myself here only, is because we are being too literal in the meaning of the word of literal. Uh, which is ironic (laughs) then again that just is a limitation of language if someone say oh you're being too literal no I'm not being literal because one is not being literal you know it's just funny how that works but you can't change it but in the end of the day as a matter of, do you trust the people who make rules in general, or do you not? And are you willing to carry the burden of consequences to a not rule following of yours, even though there was rules to prevent said consequences? To which I say, well, no, I'm just going to follow the rules, 
And if there is consequences that were foreseeable for the rule-making parties, they are not on me. Due to me having the ability to think that whoever made the rule, um, having taken the responsibility of using said ability to think, it's just, you know... And again, I think I may well be an exception in thinking like this. And the anecdotal evidence I got for that statement is when I did the inventory for my former place of internship, um, formerly my potential future employer, um, before 19 days notice cancellation, 19 hours, not days, um, when I'd done the inventory for them, I was not going through the storage and scanning everything myself. That's what they done in the time where they had downtime, you know. I laid out a very clear plan first in text, then they weren't able to follow it. Then I put it on a flowchart. It was idiot proof. I claim. Apparently not so, but still, you know. It was basic rules. You have something. Is this section currently being inventoried? Yes. No. No. Okay. Proceed to return it to the section. Yes. Where you asked to unload it from the inventory job when ret when loading it on your current job. Yes. No. Yes. Okay. Proceed. No. Okay. Make a note or whatever. I'm not actually given the full diagram here, but this is my recollection of it. And there was things that turned up months later because they weren't in the right sections. And the joke is not even anyone who worked there currently. Because those things were like that before I was an intern. They've been there for more than an inventory. They've been there since more than a year. Just in the wrong place. And if I were cynical, I'd say someone might have placed it somewhere for it to fall off lorry or so, uh, figuratively speaking. But first of all, I'm not that cynical, and second off, there's no one there to have it fall of a lorry fall. Uh, speaking of things fall of lorries, let me just get something while I'm here. This is actually a 2.5 square millimetre cross section thing that fell off lorry for me. Um, then again, I don't mind because things fall off lorries all the time, um, of the back of a truck, you know, which is I got about, I guess, seven metres two and a half square millimeter cross section cable um strands and this is heavy shit but i'll hopefully use it latest to add an auxiliary battery to the car assuming i ever make it to stand on my own two feet and be able to justify the expense for that then again considering the amount of time i spend in the car i don't think that's going to be too hard assuming i have an income um Big assumption, big if, but you know, one I've got to have hopes and ambitions because what else is there to get up for? Well, didn't get up today, didn't get up yesterday, well, didn't get up yesterday, didn't get up the day before yesterday, no, I did get up the day before yesterday, oh well, uh, relative time is currently screwed with my circadian rhythm, um, so what have one got to get up for? Well, to be fair, I'm not the party to be asking that to be asked that because I haven't been managing too well with the getting up bit that's just kind of sad but that's the way it is uh, and we're already on our third brew of tea now oof time to fly by the way thank you very much for sticking around and watching me ramble Truly means the world to me. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for listening. And thank you very much for engaging. If you drop me a comment, then again, I'll most certainly say that in the response. Truly means the world to me. And I mean, I know i got to get the bureaucracy done that i got to get done. Um, particularly both get my certificates in order for my career coaching and produce 
and find and collect paperwork for getting um, dole unemployment money or citizens money burger guilt but it's gonna be a hard one for me man I don't know if that's the ADHD also but I reckon I'll I'm happy if I manage to get it done by Monday for the documents I need on Tuesday morning and that might be optimistic I think it's just lack of energy then again good news is i know where i got most of the documents the only problem is i was asked to bring the originals in paper but some of these documents such as several for my references for work are done um do not exist in paper because they never existed in paper and i don't know what to bring there i think i'll just print it out and put one of these little sticky flags on it um, getting them right away for illustrative purposes because as this video format I might as well show let me just pour this brew before it go bitter ah there we go yeah um, I might just print them out nonetheless and just put flaggy bits on because how else are they supposed to know they even exist and i don't actually know where my flaggy bits are so i just got up for no good reason at all sorry for that uh but you know the little flaggy post-it bits you can put on the side of documents might just have to do that and i am slightly concerned because i mean all my documents include shit like my birth certificate birth certificate there we go but i only got one of those and i'm not getting a spare original and i'm not really comfortable taking the original out of the fireproof safe i got fireproof box you know because if i lose that i'm in a bureaucratic nightmare latest when i apply for my british passport when i try to apply for my british passport because if i ain't got it then i'm screwed And then again, I don't even know if they need that because they said all of your history and all of your documents and certificates. But yeah, okay, my birth certificate do say I am a British citizen. Um, well, together with my parents' marriage certificate. Um, but I don't think that is relevant for the career coaching. Then again, they said all, no exceptions. So I'll just bring them all the shit. Which I really don't see the point in, but, you know, I'm sure they have their reasons. Same thing as the rules. Um, the person who asked me to bring all the shit is autistic, so they know communication can be difficult, first off. And second off, they've been doing it for more than a decade, career coaching for autistic people. So odds are, at least in my eyes, if they do not want a birth certificate, they would not ask for all documents, no exceptions, because a birth certificate is a document of one's history, particularly the beginning of one's history. You know, it's just, I don't know if it's necessary, and I really don't feel comfortable taking it out of the house. So I might just only bring a good copy of that for them, because it's better than none. If they really need the original, I can bring the original the appointment after because I mean there's still going to be documents that I cannot give them because I do not have them yet for example my graduation bachelor's degree document what actually my bachelor's degree that's the full name of the document there we go because I'm only getting that on the 29th and the appointment is on Tuesday which is da -da -da -da, the 12th which means 17 days before I get that piece of paper. They want me to bring it in, but I can't because it might exist, but I don't have it. That being said, uh, talking about documents I have or haven't, I finally got my disability ID. So I'm gonna have to turn that into job center as well because I told them I'd hand it in after the fact. But I finally have that piece of plastic Looks so unprofessionally printed for government. For, it's just sad. 
I mean, anyone with a cardstock printer can print this shit at home and have it be better quality. Admittedly, I say this as a person with neither cardstock nor a cardstock printer. But, you know, it's really poor quality. I don't want to dox myself, so I'm not going to get it out. But, you know, it's potato quality. Might be normal. It might just be that their local guy have a printer underneath his desk that he pull out whenever someone need one and print it. I don't actually know how they do it. But I can tell you it's not an official government printed thing. Be right back, I've got to blow my nose. There we go. Um, and I, things like the disability ID, I will make my mind split about by following the rules a bit. Because at least citizen facing, customer facing, the people who issue the disability IDs are the same people who make the rules. They are the government or branches of the government. And yeah, I mean, many rules are written in blood due to people dying due to not obeying the rules before they didn't exist. But if those parties are also responsible for issuing disability IDs and they look like someone drew them up in Microsoft Paint, not 3D, just the old school one, you know, the one on Windows XP. It's really hard to trust their rules, but it's also... As a citizen, sorry, I had a hair there hanging on the shelf. Um, as a citizen, I don't think it's my responsibility to consider the validity of rules. For what's the point of rules if each one has to be considered for its validity? You know. Either rules function or they don't. Then again, a speed limit. Is supposed to be precisely that a limit and it's not supposed to be the lower limit because it's not zero zero would just mean you can't go backward which is almost understandable but you know 30 kph 50 kph you can't do that from an instant which means you have to accelerate which means they are certainly not a lower limit and considering in german law uh rules of the road they are referred to as upper bound speed limits that means you aren't supposed to be able to go faster than that and i mean i understand i'm autistic and other people are not which means i might be taking this too literally and for the sake of experimentation i have been trying to at times just for very short stretches of road to not risk road racing or so as a potential charge but you know out of curiosity try and keep up with some of the other cars on the road just because I mean they're doing it so if I'm just keeping up with them for a couple of meters to see their speed I don't think it's that bad at least if I'm being safe about it which I am but I tap out at 15 over the speed limit and these people are still way quicker than me like it's supposed to be a hard limit I'm not supposed to be able to go 15 above and in the past it was painful for me. Now I'm almost reaching a point where it's not as big a fuss for me. But there's people who go, what, 60% over the speed limit. So 160% the speed limit in 50 kph speed limit areas and higher. Because when I do 60 the delta of our speeds is still more than double. You know, it's just, I don't get it. I don't think I'll ever get it. That's the problem. And I mean, yeah, okay, I might trust the rules blindly because I consider them to be a higher instance of understanding due to the people who make the rules. Um, 
doing that for their living as their purpose in society which means reasonably i could not spend enough effort to understand the rules with the same effort as they were made with then again i might be giving them too much credit uh, them being the legislative of the government just because you know some rules do seem poorly thought out and again i haven't spent even a working day thinking about any one particular rule and these people have spent months of committees full of people before deciding on a draft that they could propose to the rest of the government to the rest of the parliament you know I don't think I'll ever get it. That's the problem. I can try all I want. At some point, it's just wasted energy. Which is why I don't even bother trying to understand the rules. I just believe in their superiority. Um, which might be putting too much trust in previous generations of the species. But I'm not sure. And I cannot spend enough effort in a lifetime to understand the rules that are. So I don't think I have much choice but to trust them. Or to fuck about and find out. As I believe Texans say. Well, many people say. But I believe Texans are particularly well known for that. Then again, a Texan I know does not know that saying. So who knows? Sample size of one. Still better than none. Um... But, you know, what's even the point? I have a particular um, example, which is the RSA 21, which is guidelines for securing of work sites in traffic. Um, they have particular comments on warning markings. According to DIN 30710, um, DIN is Deutsches Institut for Normierung, so strictly speaking, it's the DIN norm. Uh, DIN norm 30710. And in traffic, it's really hard to find vehicles with those markings that are compliant with those guidelines. And I understand it's just guidelines, that's not the actual rule. And I'm certainly not paying the money for the publisher of the norms to actually see them because I'm poor, you know. I can't just spend 150 bucks on a PDF. But they're the guidelines for the application of those and no one cares to follow, not even the plod, you know. Which makes you wonder, why did someone ex expend the effort to write up the guidelines? If no one gives a shit, why does this party, whoever wrote it up, give a shit? Yeah, and they might just be causes it's right, but in the end of the day, there's no enforcement in reality. Which means they're wasting their energy. Then again, here I am, talking about following the rules and people not following speed limits. Which makes me much similar to them, I guess. Uh, who knows, I might have a future in that. I am hoping to by mid of Q1 next year to know which my future career will entail. Um, I don't know if I will by then, but, you know, one can only hope. That being said, one can only hope. I hope you can too hope. Maybe not only, but I hope you too can hope. Stay safe, I'll see you around. Thank you very much for sticking around. Cheerio.